Okay, good evening. Welcome back to My Story Live with Vivian Rose. Um, I am your host for this evening, even though I'm not going to be interviewing myself. I have a dear friend, a woman of God, who's going to be interviewing me this evening. Um, this evening, we're going to begin our story on divorce. We're going to begin our series on divorce. Um, it's quite nerve-wracking, but I feel that I should lead the way and share my experience um, over the last 10 years, um, what I've gone through in terms of divorce, rejection and restoration. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing my personal testimony and um, I have with me a dear and wonderful woman of God and friend, Pastor Rose Igwe. Mm. So welcome to the show. Thank Once you. Once again, she you began with us last week. Yes, I did. Yes, I know. So it was wonderful and um, we had so much fun. Yes, we did. And there's still more to come from you. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's not only me in the hot seat, <laughs> but today I'm going to be in the hot you seat. You are in the hot seat. I'm going to be in the hot seat, guys, so be gentle with me, okay? <laughs> um, she's kindly agreed to ask me questions and to interview me, but I just felt in my heart that this was the time and I, I just felt that prompting, okay, to actually share and open up because many go through divorce in the church yeah. and in the world. And it has become a plague, it's mm. become a pandemic, it can is, I say? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's become a marriage pandemic. Okay, so it's not, you know, there, there's, there's not a few who go through divorce, mm. but a lot of people may not feel at ease Which to is. speak about it, yes. yeah. Um, and I just thought the Lord was like, share your story. So I hope you will receive insight. I want to encourage you share, comment, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel, okay? Or you can um, like our page. If you're on the two, shall be one. And then please make sure to share it out. Listen, people are suffering all kinds of things behind closed doors. Yeah, exactly. So the reality is that you cannot tell always how bad things are from the outside. It is the people in the marriage that know what's going on. It is only when things get beyond, um, you know, it cannot be hidden anymore. Yeah. Then suddenly everybody realizes that, oh, my gosh, things have gone really, really, really bad. So please share, share this information out, share these videos out. And we're live right now on my story live. OK, so it will be great for them to join us when we're actually talking about these things. All right. So I want to hand over to your host for the evening, Pastor Rose Igwe, okay? Visionary founder of The Two Shall Be One. But we're gonna be talking as sisters. Yeah. We're gonna be talking as friends. Mm -hmm. She's somebody that I feel comfortable sharing my story with. Um, you've heard some of it. Yes, I um, Yes, so I'm gonna hand over to you and I'm gonna answer your questions. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me just put this on and just make sure. No, but okay. Good evening, good evening. Wherever you are watching from, we are just really, really excited to be here. You know, well, I am excited. I'm very sure probably she might not be because she's <laughs> on the hot seat. You know, but I am excited. I'm excited to, you know, to have the opportunity, you know, to have been given this privilege and the honor to, you know, to interview, you know, the woman herself. <laughs> you know, many call her, you know, Mama V. You know, some know her as apostle, you know, some know her as, you know, evangelist, you know, some know her as mommy, you yeah. know, some know her as sis. daughter, you know, some know her as sis, you know, some know her as Vivian, you know, as it says here, which Vivian Rose, you know, but whichever way that you know her today, I believe, you know, at the end of this program, you will be seeing a different side you know, to her because, you know, the Lord, I believe that is something that he wants to use her as a vehicle, you know, to reach out to people, you know, today. Yes, you know, yes. I, you know, I can't say evening because, you know, we have people watching from different parts of the world. So wherever you are watching from, whatever the time is, I just want you to sit tight, you know, and enjoy. Should I say that? Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, well, if we can help you on your journey, <laughs> and enjoy. if we can help you wipe your tears, enjoy. <laughs> enjoy yeah. me. And enjoy the woman tell the woman of God tells our story. Yes. You know, because he says, you know, my story. So today she is on the LTC and she will be sharing with us 
our story. It has not been an easy journey at all. You know, I um, somebody was asking me the other, the other time how long I've known you, and I said I know. I happen to know you when your little one was still in your. You were carrying the little one. You know who is oh. now thirteen years old. Wow, the second born. The second born. You know who is now thirteen years old. So I was, you know, the person was like, "Wow!" I said, "Yeah, that is how far back." You know, yes. I've uh, I've known you. So I'm so you know privileged to be, you know, being the one to be interviewing you today. So you know, shall we start? Okay. You know, <laughs> are you ready? Steady, steady. Yes, sir. Let's go. Okay, people. Yes. You will be hearing a lot, you know, you, but I just want you to get your tissue, you know, get a tissue box. As you can see, we have a tissue box there because I'm very sure it's going to be emotional. I'm very sure it's going to be real. I'm going to, I'm, I'm very sure it's going to be, you know, you know, the story that will be coming out today is going to be a heart yeah. you know, felt story. Mm -hmm. And wherever you are, I'm telling you, you know, you will be needing your tissue. So don't tell me I didn't warn you beforehand when you start looking for your tissue box so do us all a favor get your tissue box let's go okay vivian rose yes that's my name yeah so today we're going to be dealing with you know a very very touchy subject divorce is a very touchy subject you know in the body of christ in the church and a lot of people you know it has become you know it's like you know in um Israel, when people talk, when they talk about, you know, the person has leprosy, you know, it's like, you know, people see, you know, people that has gone through a divorce as, oh, you know, she's got leprosy. Yeah. So I don't want to be in contact with her. I don't want to be friends with her, you know, so, but today the Lord is making you, you know, be open real up. Us yeah. and open us. Yeah. So yeah. I just want you to, you know, be free. Okay. You know, tell us what, how the journey has been so far, you know, and, you know, just share your story because there's somebody out there that I know that needs to hear that story today yeah. based on what they are going through. So I'm going to start by saying, you know, amen. I'm going to start by saying, mm -hmm, you know, why did you feel like now is the time for you to share your story? The thing is, I wasn't in the mindset I was going to share it now. Okay. I knew I had to share it because I began sharing it um, on the Two Shall Be One okay. um, platform um, last year. Um, I've written about it. Oh, just for those people that does not know what is the Two Shall Be One. Okay, yes. Can you just... Okay. The Two Shall Be One is um, the ministry that the Lord has entrusted me with, okay? Okay. Um, and basically, the mandate is to revive the nations one family at a time, okay. which means we are setting the foundation again for kingdom marriage, okay. which is releasing singles into marriage supernaturally okay. and then restoring broken relationships, okay. kingdom relationships, okay. and so that we can have healthy families. Okay. And that is what the, the mission the Lord gave me when we were praying for revival. Remember those years, right? When we are still are, but when we were really, you know, going for it and interceding for revival. That is what the Lord said, that we can't really see revival until we correct certain things. Okay. So th that's the two shall be one. So on the two shall be one, um, I have shared part one okay. of what went wrong in my marriage. So those of you guys that you've seen this, okay, it's already there. But basically it was an issue of our marriage from the beginning or near the beginning had problems, okay? It had problems. Um, we got saved. I got saved. And yeah, my husband got saved and I got saved in the same year. In the same year. In the same year. So basically, I got saved. Oh. Um, he got saved some months later because I was like, I'm not marrying unless you're born again. Okay. Because I came into Christ with like a fire. Oh. Yeah. And I just, I, I was raised Catholic, but I didn't know the Lord. I didn't know Jesus. I only knew I knew religion. I didn't know God at all. So you didn't have a relationship. I didn't have a relationship. relationship. I didn't have a okay. relationship now. I didn't have a relationship. I had morals. Okay. Yeah, I had morals. I knew what was right. I knew what was wrong. My parents had, you know, taught us that thing. But I was a proper, proper sinner, you know, son. I love to go to the club with my friends. Um, I had my boyfriends. You know, I just enjoyed my life, but I had a good life and I had a good upbringing. So I've never really had any relationship problem. Okay. And then I met my husband and 
we were fiery when we would fight, mm -hmm. but we still loved each other. So we thought, okay, we will marry. Yeah. But I now got saved. So when I got saved, I was looking to escape because I was like, this guy is not really into it, mm -hmm. into this born again thing. And the reason I was saying that is because he said to me, he goes, oh, my family are into this born again thing. Please, it's all a, 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 a big, um, a, what do you call it? Like when people are deception. Okay. Yes, because of what he'd seen. What he'd seen was Christians that used to preach one thing and do something else. Okay, so okay. that's why you can, you can make reference to born again thing yes because i'm just wondering you know where did that phrase come from born again thing yeah so that he now explained because i said to him so you knew about jesus and he was like yeah okay and i was like but you've never once told me about jesus <laughs> so i was like jesus is what i'm looking for mm. so i found the lord because i went to a business meeting and then the people in the business meeting talked about jesus mm. but they talked from the perspective of what was going on in their relationship mm. And I saw the way their relationship was, especially the man. He was very honest. Mm. And that really drew me. And I said to myself, I want to be in this business because I really like these people's character. And then they said, if you want to know the secret behind how our life turned around, mm. come on Sunday. And I went and they told me the testimony of Jesus. Jesus. So mm. that was my attraction. And then I didn't go to church straight away. But I tried to read the Bible. Mm. I tried to kind of get into it. I was very kind of bored with it. I didn't know where to start. But in my mind, I knew that, you know what, you need to find the church that you can really enjoy. That was in my mind. I knew that Catholic Church had their rigid ways. Oh. And I knew that it wasn't my deal at all. So I was like, okay, I need to find a church that was like the people that I saw. Mm. Okay. okay. So that was in my mind for about nine months. But in those nine months, I met a man of God who was kind of my age and he was fun. He was ordinary. He was cool, but he loved the Lord and he loved the word. So I was like, I've never met any priest who's young. So he invited me to church and I went and I went with my um, brothers, my sisters. And then I saw everything. I didn't understand everything, but the only thing I saw was the joy. I saw joy in praise and worship. I saw joy in the way they were, and I couldn't understand what are they so joyful over? Because for me, the music wasn't that cool, mm. okay? It was live music, but I was like, it's not, you know, I was a soul girl. I was into compare, rare groove. Were you comparing the music to the one you used to hear in I was the... used to rare groove. Uh -huh. I was used to jazz. I was used to soul music, you know, um, R&B. I was like, you know, I don't know why you guys are so happy. I mean, the music is okay, but it's not the best. You <laughs> understand? But I just thought to myself, so that means that it's not the music. That means there's something. And there was two particular sisters, the joy on their face. I was like, that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Because the reason I went to, to, to dance and to club, I love dancing. I didn't really like drinking or anything. All I wanted to do was to dance. So I had a friend of mine in university and we knew on Monday, it was Friday night club. On this Tuesday, it was this. Every day, there was a specific club. Of the week. Of the week. Wow. And then when you go there, it's like you know what the music is. And so you can have fun. You can dance because I love to dance. So that was it. So that was how, you know, I came to know the Lord. And so I asked them about it. And they said, oh, it's the Jesus joy. The Jesus joy. Okay. Did you hear that? The Jesus joy. The Jesus joy. So when I heard about the Jesus joy and um, they spoke, a guest minister spoke about edification the importance of edification and encouragement and honor. I'd never heard that word before, apart from at that business meeting. So I put two and two together. I said, okay, these people are like those people. Mm -hmm. And so now I gave my life for real. Like I told my family, listen, we've got to give our lives. Wow. I gathered all of them. We all went to the church. And I was like, when they say the altar call, all of you follow me because I'm the yeah. eldest. Oh, <laughs> I was wondering, how did that happen? <laughs> all, all of you are the, the eldest. I gathered all of them. I gathered all of them, yeah, because I'm the yeah, eldest. I and that. Yeah, and we have to be in church because my parents will call us. Are you guys in church? Because they were abroad, okay? So I was like, we've got to go to church. But I found a new church that's more, you know, fun. So let's all go. And I, I, I drilled them. I said, when they do the altar call, all of you to the altar. I didn't know that you give your own life to Christ. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? You actually just reminded me of 
you know, of the woman, uh, the Samaritan woman. Yeah. You know, after meeting Jesus, that went and like, come on, every one of you. Yeah. You know, come meet because this we're going to be saved. I need them all to be saved. You know what I mean? I was not selfish. I was like, listen, this is the way. Jesus is the way. We've, you know, we've known Catholic, but we don't know God. And let's just go. So we all went to the altar call. But at that time, my um, younger sister, not the youngest one, the middle one, she gave her life for real. I gave my life for real. Wow. The other two did not. Because I did not know that is a personal thing, right? But we all went to that altar. Wow. Okay. I think my brother actually escaped because he goes, listen, I've got to go shopping. And this, <laughs> this, this kind of, it's it was Christmas Eve. It's taking oh, too long. Okay. So I've got to go. So he just escaped <laughs> and he went, you know. But um, so that Jesus joy came into me. So now, by then, I was already, um, he'd already expressed, my ex-husband had expressed his interest in me. Mm. He liked me. And I said to him, you know what? Um, he asked me to marry him, I think, around the same time. And I'd already been saying to him, I'm not going to sleep with you. I'm not going to sleep with you because I've made up my mind because of what I've been seeing, mm. that you don't really need to sleep with men to get married because I've been asking men. Mm. I was in a talk show earlier on this week and I said I wasn't born again before I realized this thing doesn't work, doesn't work. by observation listen single people are you hearing that she said by observation you know that the way of the world does not work it doesn't work it doesn't work wow. and I worked it out because men were telling me stories and I was listening to the stories of the business people I, was, I asked my dad when did you know that you wanted to marry mom and I realized that most of them wanted to marry their wives without even sleeping with them so I was like, what is this boyfriend-girlfriend nonsense? I just opted out immediately. And I said, I'm not doing it. And I said, the next person I sleep with is going to be my husband. Oh. And I kept my word. Wow. I kept my word. So anyway, so, but I've now, now he was like, you know, obviously he's a guy, he's trying it on. And I said to him, I've told you already. And he's like, okay, okay. But then I kind of said to him, okay, when we get engaged, I will speak with you. Because then at least I know I'm going to marry you. That's what I said. Okay. Just before that, I got born again. Wow. <laughs> so now when I he called me, I was like, oh my gosh, I met Jesus. These pastors ruin people's relationship. <laughs> he was mad. These pastors ruin. So I began asking the pastor, is this all right? If I were engaged now, is this all right? And he just took me to the scripture, to the scripture, wow. to the scripture. Thank God for his life. Yeah. And he gave me a love for the word. And so I just read the word, read the word, read the word. And I said to him, listen, this Jesus I found, I can't step back. It's too good. So you've got to make up your own mind, but you know, we'll see how it goes. So after about nine months, he gave his life to Christ. Praise God. Praise God. And so I was like, okay then. So within a month, we planned the wedding, we got married. Wow, within okay. a month. Within a month, wow. within a month, within a month. And it was even a miracle how we got married because I was trying to escape. And I was saying, listen, there are guys in the church. Mm -hmm. So this one that I don't even know what's going on with him, you know, <laughs> go. And I was looking for a way to kind of... So basically, you were at a position where you were now choosing or picking. I thought. <laughs> I thought. I thought. Listen, guys. That's why I say to people, you can easily miss your husband. Because to be honest, I was looking at him as a boyfriend. I was not looking at him as a husband. Okay. Now, I'm born again. And, you know, you're praying and you're reading the word and everything else. Now, I never prayed about marriage. Mm -hmm. I just prayed about what I wanted. I wanted the spirit of God. I wanted this. I wanted that. So three times the Spirit of God said to me, that man is your husband. Three times. Three times. At different times I was praying. And it came strong. And so I was looking for an escape. And I said, listen, I asked the pastor, I said, you know, when a man, the Lord is saying to you that a man is your husband, but he's not really into God the way you are. And, it, you know, shouldn't you just leave him? And he said to me, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking for an excuse, but he said to me, it doesn't work like that. Bless godly father in the Lord. Yeah, man. <laughs> he said, it doesn't work like that. He said, you have to wait on the Lord and see what the Lord is saying. Yeah. But, you know, maintain your standards. And the Lord said the same thing to me. He said, maintain your standards, okay, but he is your husband. And like I said, nine months later, he gave his life um, in, a, in a conference. So I was like, green light marriage looking back i should have been a little bit wiser we should have allowed him to be more established in christ oh, okay. and we should have built more of a courtship mm -hmm. but again there was no advice there was no counsel at that time so we just got married because i knew what god had said he knew what god had said and the lord met him separately yeah. met him separately and that was it anyway he gave his life to christ and that was it okay but he had issues with god he has issues with god 
Okay, so I'm very sure you know we'll find out what those issues are yes. you know, on my next or the next one after you know of the questions because I've got so many questions here to ask you and I'm just yeah. looking at the time and I'm like you know I hope we'll be able to get as much okay. as possible out mm -hmm. there for our viewers today to really know who you know the Vivian Rose you know that is you know just letting you know the single woman out there knows that it's so important to maintain you know a godly standard yes you know and you know preparing yourself as a wife and you know the what you need to know you know so i'm going to be asking you my next question i said you know why did you seek help sorry oh no sorry i jumped actually so how long were you actually married for we were married for 14 years 14 years we were married for 14 years wow but in that 14 years we separated three times 14 years you separated for three yeah, times yeah yeah wow. we separated three times because the issues we got began to come between us because i was on fire but he still had this issue that even though he got born again when the lord didn't do things the way he thought they should be done like if his prayer was not answered or he couldn't get his question answered the way he thought he would backslide in his heart and think now this thing is you know he always had this kind of and distrust or mistrust of God. Okay. But I didn't know then, because I didn't know his story. But I didn't know then that the hypocrisy he'd been seeing had really eaten him up, eaten him up. And his dad and his uncle had done certain things as Christians mm -hmm. and as ministers okay. that were not biblical. So, so he saw those things in he the saw church. them and he questioned them and they shut him down as a child. As a child. And said it's none of his business and they shut him down now that built in him a mistrust for god so anytime god didn't jump to do something to do him, something that he thought that same. yeah okay. he thought oh i've tried it it doesn't work okay. and i said it's not an he it's not an it mm -hmm. it's a he because mm -hmm. now i understood that i know him so i said to him just get to know him but this issue became worse because then jealousy came in because like my whole heart is in this god in this Jesus, going to prayer meeting, listening to the pastors, you know, and I know I didn't use some wisdom. When I look back, I, and, and I did apologize to him and say to him later on, you know, I said to him, you know, I never meant to provoke jealousy in you. I was just on fire for God and you just weren't into him. But I was like, I'm sorry, I'm not leaving him because of you. You know what I mean? And I just say to him, I said to him, if you can take me to heaven, no problem. But if you can't, you know, so sorry, but this is it. You know, so I could have maybe used other words. But anyway, the fact of the matter is God came in between us because he was in and out. Mm -hmm. And I was in. on the in, in and going up and up and up like this. So it got to a stage whereby violence became um, his response to try and control me. Wow. Yeah. Violence. Violence, yeah. You know, became... when you use the word, you know, violent, do you mind, you know, sharing with us? Yeah. The thing is, we... When I say violence became, I said it became because when we were caught in, if we were arguing, there was a time whereby I slapped him. And when I say I slapped him, I really slapped him okay. because I hate foul language. Mm -hmm. So he was using foul language on me and I slapped his face. Okay. And he was like, what? That sparked something in, okay, him. in him. And then he was like, okay, this woman is strong, so I need to do something. Mm -hmm. So when to I need overpower her. to overpower her, yes. But at that time, he wasn't, he was okay. He was okay. But when we got married i was already born again so now i know that even if you're angry you can't slap his face because he's swearing at you mm -hmm. you understand so i said to him you know what we can't have violence in between us and we agreed okay. he actually sat down and we said no this is not right you and i said to him no we had conversation no matter what happens no matter how cross we get with each other no violence no. and we agreed and the lord convicted me and he said never do it ever ever okay. again that's what the Lord said to me. And I said, amen. And, you know, we agreed. Now, we agreed. I stopped. He didn't. So now, any time, it, it would normally be provoked by me going to prayer meeting. Okay. And prayer meeting would be like three times a week. So that is him showing his jealousy. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, come with me. You understand? But it's like, this God, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. And anytime I would speak that like, don't say those things against God, then he'll be like, you don't need to defend God because at the end of the day, you know, um, 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 he's God enough, whatever. It was just whatever. But I just became the, the, the punching bag for him. So when I say violence, he was a boxer. He was a boxer. Wow. <laughs> he was a boxer, amateur boxer. So 
punching, yes. Slapping, yes. Dragging, yes. Wow. Other things, yes. Wow. Yes. These were realities. So literally, you were getting the full package. Yes. But the thing is, violence. anytime it would happen, you would go into deep remorse and tears. Deep and, remorse and tears. And you, I know now that it's a cycle, okay? Mm. They do it. They lose control. Violence, abuse. Oh, I'm really sorry. I'll never do it again. And you're just like, you're trying to make your marriage work now. Because now it's no longer boyfriend, girlfriend. Now you're like, now you're trying to make your marriage yeah. work. Now you're reading the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now you're like, I want to please God. Yeah. And then I began to say to God, why do you hate women? Because it's like, women just shut up and put up. Because I, I didn't tell anyone apart from my little sister, because she saw it. So and he, his uncle. You literally uncle, did not talk to anybody in the church. I, and for the first one year, I didn't. You didn't. I didn't. But my sister saw it. And his uncle saw it. Because this will take me to my next question. You know, yeah. Why did you not? seek for help yeah at the beginning i just thought we could handle it mm -hmm. because it wasn't happening every day okay but it got worse okay it got worse so it progresses it progresses you. so when it got like to the point whereby my life was in danger i knew that okay i have to tell someone so i told two of the ministers by that time he was like what can these pastors tell me so he avoided them when they came to the church, or if he, when they came home, he would make sure he was out. Because I tried to get them into counseling. He would run away and make sure he's out. There was one time when um, he was able to speak with them. He got crossed by one of them. Um, the way one of them was speaking, he thought was arrogant. And the other one was more gentle, but he still was not persuaded. So at this point, may I ask that? So does that mean he actually did not have a person that he submits to? You know, an authority figure over No, him. there was no one. A mentor. There was no one. There was no one. There was no one. Don't forget, I did not tell his parents. His parents were from Nigeria. And I just felt it's not something you call your in-laws and say, oh, your son is beating me. I don't know why. I was protecting him. Were you ashamed? At that time, I wasn't ashamed. I just thought we could handle it. I, I'm sorry, sis, but this is the deception of abuse. You don't, I didn't know I was an abused woman until later on. I didn't look at it like that. I looked at it like, what can I do to stop him hitting me or to stop him going into that kind of rage? So I started changing myself. I started, you know, okay, be quiet. Okay, um, don't say anything. Okay, don't talk about this. You know, I changed my personality completely, trying to please him. But anybody that knows abuse uh, uh, um, has been part of domestic abuse and violence, you understand that. It's a pattern. It's a habit. It's a habit. So today, this will get him crossed. Tomorrow, that will get him crossed. Mm -hmm. You don't know what the trigger is. It's not the same trigger. So it's like basically walking on eggshell. Yes. With the end of the Yes. Because you don't know what You, you don't know what the trigger is. It changes because the whole motive is control. You understand? So I realized that control was actually what it is. That control was to make me understand that, listen, you're going to do what I say, like it or not. And you're going to come away from this God. But the more he insisted I come away from God, the more I clung to God. Because for me, he was my only person I could talk to. He was the one I could cry on. He was the one I told everything. I always say to people, like I used to pray in the bathroom. My bathroom can tell you my whole story. You know what, can we just pause here and just, I just want you to, you know, to share with somebody that is out there and is, you know, going through same situation mm. and just does not know how do I, you know, I want to talk to this God because I've heard, I'm hearing your story and, you know, I wish I can be like you. Can you just give them, you know, one or two advice concerning, yeah. you know, yeah. just having to express themselves before? Yeah. I would say whatever situation you are in, as a man or a woman, God is your friend and he's a protector. Listen, I have seen things that I should not be alive today. I have seen things that, should have broken my bones as in my hand has been twisted to the point whereby I felt it breaking, but it didn't break. I wasn't able to use it for six months, but it didn't break. I've seen things that there was no living being in our environment that could have delivered me. But just by praying in the spirit and pleading the blood of Jesus, a shield came down and protected me. An unseen shield, but I saw it and I felt it. You know, the word of God is so powerful, says, because the Lord taught me very early on any negativity that is spoken to you, yeah. reject it. Okay, reject it. 
And so that became my habit because before the violence comes, the words come. So if you're in a relationship that words are being released, negative, insulting, violent words are being released, you're steps away from physical violence. So don't wait for physical violence. You are steps away. But with the words, words are worse. They're like arrows. They cut. And words have a long shelf life. You can remember what somebody said years after. after. So you need to draw closer to God and he will give you wisdom on what to do. In my case, he said to me, anytime negative words are coming, reject them and bind them so that their shelf life is taken sure. out is destroyed but it will still hurt you because this is somebody you love you, you understand love, of course. you love the person so i just want you to know that god is right there and believe you me i don't know if he remembers this there was a time whereby literally i was in two times one i was in the bedroom the other one i was in the bathroom and in his rage because i was praying in the bathroom he banged the door down the lock and everything he broke it wow. he was very strong he was very strong and so i was in the bathroom praying and normally i would lock it so that people so that he would not be able to come in okay but in this particular time i just ran in the bathroom out of fear and he ran in after me but i locked it but he banged it and it broke so i something rose in my spirit and i just stood in the bath jesus i just called jesus jesus in the spirit jesus jesus and he froze literally like this he froze i don't know what froze it but he froze Listen, there is power in the name Just of Jesus. Just call on Jesus. He there is froze. power in the name. Listen, I hope I'm not the only one hearing this. You know, she said that he froze. He f Listen, wow. this is a bathroom. There's no exit. There's no window. Nothing. This this is a man that has literally almost breaking down the door. He's broken to to the you. door. Wow. He's come in. I can't even remember what he was holding in his hands. But he froze. And then he just froze for some seconds. And then he turned back and then he went out to the living room. Now, I was so scared that I did not follow him. I just closed the door back as much as I could. I just closed the door back and I stayed there for an hour. And I just began praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit. After an hour, I tiptoed out. He was fast asleep in the sofa. Wow. Wow. So Jesus has delivered me face to face. Wow. And this happened twice, another time in the bedroom. So the third time when I realized, listen, your life, your life, your life, I just picked up my bag and I ran out. Wow. I ran out. Wow. Ran out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Listen, you know, I, uh, this is just, you know, this, your story, it doesn't matter how much I've known you and how many times I've heard you talk about it. Every single time you just, you, you, you like, Thank God it's not me. Because so many has lost their life. Yeah. You know, and if Jesus was not in your boat with you, you as in we just cannot tell. Probably we will not even be yet to exactly to tell exactly. the story. Exactly. You know, and I know out of even though the marriage was, you know, there was violence in the marriage, there was hostility and all the rest that was in the marriage something beautiful came out of it yeah and when i say something beautiful i'm talking about the two children yeah you know the two wonderful you know wonderful wonderful girls that you have listen they are my children you know, so i'm claiming mother you know i tell them i'm your second mom so they know they say auntie rose you know second mom you know but they have such a beautiful love, beautiful yeah. girls yeah. tell us about yeah so the um, the gifts, they're beautiful gifts. And I think in the third year of marriage, I felt that prompting in my spirit and the Lord confirmed it through a prophetic word. He said to me, you need to start having children. And I thank God I listened to that voice. I heard the voice clearly. You need to start having children. Mm -hmm. Now, I wasn't planning on having children because I was trying to settle the marriage. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking because we've been we've been separated once just for about three months. That's the time I had to tell my family. And I told them, and my dad came over and spoke to us and tried to counsel us. The pastors were just like, just pray about it. Just pray about it. No assistance. And there was a time I went to my spiritual father's house. He just sent me back home. You know, that was the kind of thing that was going on. There was no real help, help in terms of sitting us down and saying, okay, what is the problem? Now, I know now 
that the rage was not directed is directed at me but he had he carried that rage into the marriage yes because of what somebody else had done and i got the backlash but i still think that if we had managed to get hold and hold him to account and bring counseling into it early i know he ran away you know what i mean but the, if we had made more effort i think that things could have could have it may not have but it could have been much better but anyway so my parents came into it and stuff and, and you know at my i knew that once parents got into it he would be a little bit cross because now he's exposed right but i knew that this is the only way because i was like i need assurance you're not going to continue this you're not going to continue this kind of behavior i can't cope with this at all and he gave my parents because for three months I didn't go home. I lived with my brother. Okay. And so he didn't know where I was. I didn't tell him where I was. So there was no contact. No, I didn't tell him where I was. I just ran out of the house with my bag and that was it. Wow. And and I redirected my mail really? and I went to work and I didn't say anything to anyone. Wow. But obviously I told my family. So when he now knew that, okay, this girl is not coming back, he now began to call my workplace and he's like, okay, please, I want you to come back. And I was like, okay, but we need to get people to help us. And thank God my dad came and he sat down with us and he spoke with us and everything else. And at that time he was kind of like compliant okay. and he was like, okay, he wants to get help and he doesn't want to become that man. He doesn't want to be that person. So he can identify with the fact that that person. Yeah. He would always say that this is not me. This is not how I normally behave. You know, so he, he, he didn't want to be that man. And I said to him, you're afraid of yourself because you don't know how to control yourself. You know, I don't want to be that man. So we kind of had some assurances. And we sat down and we thought, okay, we want to continue the marriage because we both agreed we wanted the marriage mm. and we wanted to work on the marriage. Okay, so we went back into it. And then in that year, um, I remember the, it was the third year. So by the fourth year, the Lord said, you need to start having children. He, yeah, and I was kind of like, we need to settle. We need to pay debts. We need to make sure our relationship is strong. But I felt that urge as well. You know, you need to start having children. But it took me time to get pregnant. And that's another testimony. Okay. The fibroids. Yes. The fibroids story is a whole nother thing. It took months. But anyway, I finally got pregnant. Got there. <laughs> and it was praise God. And then I lost the first one. Wow. In pregnancy. That must have been a big blow. That set him off again. Oh, dear God. Because now it's like, you were the one praying in this house. You were the one doing this. We've been praying. And at that time, we were in a good place. We were in a good place. You've been praying. You've been fasting. I've been praying with you every day. And this God has not heard. Wow. So the rage came back. And I remember he came to my bed and said, you know, just leave this God, right? He doesn't work. Really? You were the one. He goes, he goes, I'm not a good Christian, but you're a good Christian. Wow. So if you're a good Christian and this God is going to allow you to go through this, he was like, <laughs> leave this God. And I said to him, you're talking like Job's wife. I said to him, hold your peace. You're talking like Job's wife. God has given us a promise. We will have a child, okay? Not knowing later on, guys, I didn't just lose the child because the Lord showed me later on a lot of witchcraft was involved, okay, in the loss of that baby. Yeah. yeah, but that's another story. But that set him off again. But I was so furious with the devil, and I was like, I'm having a baby this year by then it was march i'm having a baby so i told him you've got a month to make me pregnant okay and they told me don't <laughs> even try and conceive for uh, they said don't even try and conceive for six months because i lost blood you know five boys are there and everything and i ignored everything i didn't tell him because i didn't allow him in, in the room okay so because what did they say and i said nothing i said you've got a month to make me pregnant <laughs> You Listen, go on, man. When a woman wants something, she goes with it. I was she like, goes for God it. has promised me a child. I'm having a child. Already my marriage is whatever. But if God's going to give me a baby, I'm having that baby. Anyway, I got pregnant within a month. Oh, Praise be to God. Lord. And bless his mom as well. His mom prayed. Oh, bless her. She soul. really prayed. She sent a book, which was wonderful. And so I had agreement in the family. She and me, right? I got pregnant and I had my firstborn. So she was the first treasure that came out. <laughs> but by that time, we were five years married. Three months later, because I thought that was stop the violence. Because he'd been triggered again, it got worse. Three months later, we separated, finally. Wow. Because he got triggered in front of his mom. And literally, the baby was in the room. And I was holding the baby. A three-month-old baby. Three-month-old baby. And I was so frightened because I was like, what's going to happen to this girl? I didn't want her to get any blows. Mm -hmm. 
And so I kind of put her at the side and he just took her off me and put her down. I was like, what? You know, and the mom was screaming and everything. Stop it, stop it, stop it. He was gone. And he told her, you be silent. So that's when I realized that this one is telling his mom off. Then who is going to save Who is going to save me? So I just called my sister and said, listen, I'm coming to your place now. I actually left the house that night with the baby. And um, I was looking for a hotel. Everywhere was booked. So I told my sister, you know what? I can't come now. I have to come tomorrow. And so that was it. But I stayed downstairs and I left. I left. But then the Lord said to me, don't divorce him yet. Because I thought that was the end. You know, every, I listened to you talk and I heard the word, you know, the Lord. The Lord told me, the Lord said, the Lord, you know. So you've been a person that you've really, really, genuinely, from the onset, have a personal relationship yes. with the Lord. Yes. Because, you know, you're somebody that, you know, he spoke to all the time. It's like he's giving you instruction, you know, direction, you know, what to do, you know, what not to do. So that that was a very beautiful thing to happen to yes. you yes. at that early stage. Because I had no counsellor. I had no counselor. You know, I had no one to really say, this is what should be done. And there was no one speaking into the matter. They just said, go and pray. So Jesus was a real person. Yes. And I even told God off because I said to him, Father, why do you hate women? I said to him, why do you just say, just submit? Because that's what they said to him, just submit. And then he will stop. And then the Lord told me, he said to me, why do you love a baby? When I was praying by the sink, washing the dishes. I said, no reason. And he said, when I said, husbands love your wives, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. He said to me, it's not what you do or don't do. Hmm. It is an action. It is an attitude. It is decision. Hmm. So that kind of calmed me down because I was like, I was, I was, I was getting upset with the Lord, but I used to talk to him about it and say to him, I'm not happy because in the world, I said to him, Lord, in the world, I will handle this man. In the world, first and foremost, if you handle me, I will handle you. In the world, if you hit me, I will find something strong and big. I will hit you. Listen, for those of you that have not met this woman in person, yeah, I think she's about five foot two, so she's not that <laughs> yeah. tall. So when she's telling you that, you know, in the world, she will undo you. Listen, you know, you don't even want to try that to die. She will undo you. That's what I was telling the father. But I said, but your word has bound me, okay? And don't forget, I loved the Lord. I loved Jesus. You are. I, I yeah. loved him. And so I was like, I want to please you, but you've got to help because, you know, you see that I can't do what I would have done. I can't say what I would have said. So what's the options you know what just for the sake of our viewers yes you know because i know you are and you know you're a global mm -hmm. minister and i know that there's so many people that will meet have the opportunity to meet you in the future are you five foot two i'm five foot one <laughs> strong will so i knew that you know i'll come toe to toe with you you know i will come toe to toe with you but the lord was like no you've got to take the the different approach and i had a fiery temper you understand so you know people were like too wrong to make a right and stuff so i was trying to be the godly woman within this kind of difficult thing but the lord will give me counsel and one he said to me he said you know the foolish see it was, it's in proverbs the foolish see danger and continue but the prudent, the wise, hide. Okay, so he said, you can see, because I kept on saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because he said he would separate. Because I said to him, if you hit me with a child around, we've got to separate. You've got to leave this house. You know, I said to him, you've got to. I'm not having my child in the middle of this. You know, and he said, okay. But when it started again, he didn't leave. He didn't leave. And I was like, where are you going? And every day he got, we went to work and I was like, Lord, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do I do? What do I do? And God said to me, Open your eyes. You see the prudent, see danger and hide. So he told me, go to your sisters. He's not leaving. You go. And I, then I got cross with God because I said, I've got a baby, three-month-old baby. And you're telling me I've got to uproot myself 
You're telling me I've got to be the one to go to a place that wasn't even, her house was not decorated at that time. Mm -hmm. The carpet was not on the floor at that time. So I was like, I need, you know, I've got a baby. I've got a protector. God said to me, do not divorce him. Because by then, it, you know, um, um, the police have been involved, obviously. The police were involved and they were like, do you want to press charges? And I said, I don't want to press charges, but I need separation. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, they will take him out of the house, but only for 24 hours. And then the lawyers got involved and said, I think the best thing is that you divorce. But on the street, they all said to me, don't divorce him, you know, but separate. And then I will work on him. I thought it would go take God a week, a month, three months, five years. Wow. In that five years, already I was called into ministry, but I was just serving in the church. But in that five years, the Lord said to me, I've called you to the nations and I want you to serve me and serve in the church. So that's when my ministerial training began. Yes. It did not begin. Wow. <laughs> listen, listen. I'm looking, you know, I'm looking at my list of questions. You, and I'm you, like, you may not ask all, I'm, but anyway, you know, I'll do obviously, my best. obviously, you know, but I just want you to share with us, you know, okay. so that was how the beautiful, you know, your beautiful yeah. girls came on about. I just want you to share with us, how did this affect you? as a person because you've you've told us that you're such a strong real person yeah you know i learn obedience you learn obedience i learn obedience i am my life today because of obedience i can tell you categorically i am who i am today because of obedience i learned categorical obedience i learned instant obedience listen when you're when you're running away from your life okay. when you don't know where you're going to get money from to eat your food because when i had the child the first child he said don't divorce at that time, we'd sold our property looking for a second. Um, and then we had a joint account, but I didn't always have the account. And I said to him, give me at least 2000 So in the separation, I can take care of the baby. He said no. So I knew that I had to depend on God for, to eat. I had to depend on God to live. Now, it took him about a year or two years before he began to even give her anything. Wow. So I had to learn to depend on provision protection wisdom what to do where to go the church he asked me to serve in was a was a ground up church was a new church plant oh. they didn't have money okay oh. it's just for tnt mm. so i learned obedience he trained me in it just for for the sake of um, clearance for those of you that is wondering what is T tnt tnt, TNT is like travel and and expenses is it or i think you know, I just put it to travel, basically. Yeah, basically you know? travel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> travel and, and, and maybe refreshments, you know. Travel and tea. Uh, yeah, travel and tea, <laughs> travel and refreshments. That was what they could afford at that time, you know. But I was happy serving him, but he gave me a business, beauty therapy. He gave me different things that I could use. You are a woman of many talents. Yeah, that's what I had to use. But again, I got it all through prayer. What do I do next? This. What do I do next? That. And at that time, it was like zero communication so after he began to kind of gradually say he wants to come and see because he missed the baby okay the baby. he missed the baby so he wanted to see the baby so we always used to have third party meetings involved. involved it was always in public it was never in private because i had to protect myself and i had to protect my environment and that continued in for up nearly five years and in the fifth year i didn't know the lord had been working on his heart okay and he had come back to the lord because he completely backslid. He went away completely. He came back to the Lord. He started going to church and then um, he went to a well-known church and they contacted me and said, he's been with them. I think they said eight months okay. and he told them what had happened. He lost his wife because of what he had done, blah, 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 blah. And he wanted to, to restore the marriage. Okay. And I told them, well, God told me not to divorce and that he would work on him and that would be restored. So that was a big testimony. And this is a period of five years yeah wow. no the, the like the fifth year literally is when they came but the i think the lord started working him in the fourth year okay so i now told them exactly what had happened and i said what i need from them is accountability partners and they promised me yes the church the church now let's you know let's you know let me take this to to the next question you know you talked you know you talked about why why did you think so many in the church are getting divorced you know or two questions you know you you know you told me about the pain of the divorce you know cannot be compared to the yeah. pain the church caused 
by yeah. rubbing salt into your wound. Yes. That is yeah. really, really, that yeah. is really, really yeah. strong. It, it's a strong statement, but the thing is, you have to understand when you are a believer or even a minister, you look to elders to help. Now, I was in a family that none of my family were born again apart from my sister. So I knew that any counsel that they're going to give me would be, you know what? My dad even said to me, just leave this man and come home. We'll give you a husband. But I knew that the Lord had told me, don't divorce him. So I said, Daddy, I'm not released to leave him yet. I can't because God has spoken to me, don't divorce him. I will work on him. Now, I didn't know it's going to take up to five years, okay? <laughs> I just thought a year or something like that. But the Lord gave me plenty of things to do and began to raise me up in ministry. So I couldn't just look to my family only, even though they love me, because they're going to give me only their practical, secular advice. I needed people in the church. The people in the church, all they could do or say was, what are you doing to make him angry? And I was like, do you know how many things I've tried not to make this man angry? And then the Lord said to me, with your child, when you're angry, do you hurt her? I said, no. He said, if you discipline her, do you hurt her? I said, no. So he said, She's, you're in authority over her. He's in authority over you. I'm in authority over him. Authority is not a license to hurt. Huh. Wow. So I was trying to explain to them that, listen, I'm not perfect in any way. And I said to them, even if I'm the worst witch of the East, let me live. I deserve to live. My life is in jeopardy. The life of my children are in jeopardy. So this is not about what makes somebody angry. This is about bringing him to account. Even men, pastors, men could not speak to my husband. They were, they, they were, they were afraid or intimidated to speak to him. Now, he's a wise man. He can answer you back. But that's not my issue. My issue is, this is what the Bible says. He needs someone to hold him to account and say, this cannot happen. If you need anything to be done, do it. Now, there was one pastor that said to me, oh, if it gets like that, call me. Okay. The day that my marriage broke down, oh. okay, not the day, but the, the three-month period that my marriage actually broke down and it led to divorce, where it could have been make or break, it could have been death or live, die or live, or live or die. Oh. In that period, I called him after an incident, and I said, he's gone so far off the rails, I am very afraid. And the police came, and I do not want to... To, 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 to give charges on him, to put charges on him, because I don't want my children's father to have a record. But we need intervention. And I said to him, I'm just thinking that, you know, I've left before, but I don't want to leave again. And he said to me, it's an abomination for a woman to leave her marital home. I just said to him, sir, thank you very much. Can I just pause there and ask this question? This abomination, who, who put this law in place? I don't know, sis. Because I don't I think don't there's know. any part in the Bible I that will talks never about... forget those words. I was in the kitchen. I had, I had hidden myself by the curtains to cry because the little ones, the second one was then out, were looking for me and they'd heard the argument, but they didn't see. Thank God the door was locked. They didn't see the abuse taking place, okay? But they could hear. So... I was hiding in the curtain. So I now called him, I said, and then he, ran, he went out, he went out. And I said, listen, we need intervention. It's really serious now, okay? How many times are police gonna come to this house? I don't even know, you know, I, we need something. And you said, I should call you. And he said, it's an abomination for a woman. So I said to her, but it's not, but it's okay for me to die. I asked him, I said, so it's okay for me to die. Do you know how devastating it is for you to realize that people don't actually care. They say they care, but they don't. That's what I'm saying about the pain. That Don't tell <laughs> someone, call me if you're not going to assist. And don't please get onto social media shouting about they should have left if you don't help. This is the reality. It's the reality. This is the reality. You know, when you say, you know, abomination is, you know, is an abomination, because I just really want to eat on that. You know, it's an abomination for a married woman to leave her home. You know, so this is what, when... Because for me, I'm just hearing tradition because... Yeah, and that's what I realized. I realized Nobody traditionally... Bible, you know, there's no place in the Bible. Rather, I, I, all I'm hearing in my spirit is, you know, they've made my word of no effect. Yeah. What has made my word of no effect? Yeah. You know, tradition. So now they're elevating what tradition has said 
over what the word says yeah because this is a man that is supposed to wash you with his word yeah with the yeah. word of god yeah. this is a man that is yeah. made to be your head your covering yeah you know yeah. like you said you know christ is his covering and yes. he is your covering yes. and the man is now a threat to your life your life is in danger, danger yeah. and then the people you know who are supposed to be of a help to us and who, they said know, they, they say would. to you yeah that's all oh, it is an abomination. Yes. So I knew from there because they told me, "Don't." The, the reason I'm bringing this up is not because I've got any any issue with him. Of course, I've I know you've gone through your and everything. Your but what I'm just trying to just bring up the fact is, I was trying to find a way <sighs> to save us and save our home and save my life without breaking the marriage. That was my mindset. Okay. At the same time, I realized that it's beyond me. Hmm. I can't. And at the same time, they had already asked me, don't call the police. So it's like you're stuck. But again, that's when the Lord reminded me and he said to me, you cannot expose these ones, the little ones, to some of these things because it can damage them. And he'd been asking me, by the way, for divorce for years. I didn't put that bit in, but he'd been asking me for divorce for years. I want a divorce. And when you're divorced, what kind of Christian will you be? I want a divorce. And when you're divorced, what kind of ministry will you have? Wow. So every time it was a threatening of Divorce, wow. divorce, divorce. And I said, no, because the Lord had told me, don't divorce him. Don't divorce him. So a friend came to the front door um, um, to actually look for something else. Um, one of his friends. Um, and then he, he, he found me then. And he said, oh, man, please try and um, forgive him. Don't divorce him. And I, I even said to the friend, I said, the last thing I'll do is divorce this man. <laughs> I said, the last thing I'll do, because God has said, don't divorce. Don't divorce. But after that, a series of events came to the point whereby the Lord said, I was feeling in my spirit, the Lord saying, release him, release him, release him, release him. But I thought it was the devil. So I was binding. I said, no, I will not. I will not. I will not. He went to the judge. He went to court. He took me to court and told the judge, this woman refuses to divorce me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she refuses to divorce me. He lied against me to the court. But the Lord said to me, unless a, a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Because wow. I said to God, your son is lying about you and me in the court, in your name, because you have to swear on the Bible. And the Lord just said to me, unless a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die. And he told me, say not a word. Say not a word. That was not the divorce court. That was when he was trying to get the divorce. In the December New Year, as I was giving my offering, the Holy Spirit said to me, it is me, Vivian, release him, he's mine. I was unhappy is the best way of saying it politely. I was not happy at all with God. I said, how dare you? Upon all this, my prayers, upon all this, my don't divorce him, five years separation, upon all this intercession, upon all this reconciliation, upon all this abuse, you are now telling me to release him. You should have told me this thing in the first year. So I started contending with the father and I said, God, this is not right. You said you hate divorce. And he said to me, I said, let no man separate. I reserve the right. I was like... I've never heard this before. He said, release him. And he gave me the prodigal son. He said, when the prodigal son told the father, give me your goods and go to another land. I want, I, I, sorry, give me my portion. I want to go. Yeah. He said to me, did the father run after him? And I said, no. He said, did the father stop him? I said, no. He said, don't stop him. Don't run after him. And he said something to me. When did he come back? I said, when he got to the end of himself. And he said to me, when he was ready to live by the father's rules. So God divorced me. Wow. God divorced me. And he told wow. me, release him. Now I've got to go and find a lawyer. He had got divorce papers. No, he had said he had said he wanted to divorce. And I said, no. So I went home after that prayer meeting. This was a prayer meeting. This was at the altar, by the way, hmm. at the altar. My pastor was like, oh, God hates divorce. And I said, the Lord is saying to me, release him, release him, release him. And it was, it was so loud. And release him, number one, the Lord said to me, the devil has finished your marriage. He's now looking for the destiny of the children. And both of the children at that time were crossing. One was crossing into, she was three going to four, crossing into, um, from nursery into primary, okay. into what we call a grown-up school. And then the other one was crossing having exams. 
So the Lord said to me, put your focus on the children because the devil has finished your marriage and he's after the destiny of the children. And if they see what is going on, it's going to ruin them, talk less of you. So he told me, release him. He wants to go release him. So I came home and for the first time in 14 years, I said, oh, I, I will do it. Bring the divorce papers. Wow. He refused to bring them. Wow. He refused Listen, to bring them. You know, this, you know, this woman of God, our story is just, you know, that I still have, uh, you know, um, one or two questions that I would yeah. really love to ask, but because of time, yeah. you know, and um, for those of you that you've had the opportunity, you know, to sit with her, you know, to hear her, you know, you know, messages, you know, and she shared a story, you know that, you know, she's really, really, you know, speaking from her heart. And one of the things I know people do is, you know, they tend to, the stigma that comes with when you divorce, yeah, you know, oh, she's a divorced woman. Yeah. So that means, what can she tell, tell yes. us? Yes, yeah. You know, oh, she's a divorced woman. Yeah. So that means there cannot be an anointing in her life. Yeah. She did, she's a divorced woman. You know, I don't believe, you know, in her ministry. Yeah. Listen, she said that the Lord told her to let him go. Why? Because he has persistently, yes, persistently. asked for divorce. Yeah. And one thing we know about this God is he, he does not force people out of their will. No. If you don't want to do something, he lets you go. Yeah. And I believe that is what happened. He actually marriage. gave me 12 months. Um, the January of that year, he actually gave me 12 months. And he said to me, this year, it was 20, 2010. So he said to me, this year, hand him over to me. Don't speak to him about anything, don't nothing. Just hand him over to me. In that year, he got worse, not better. And literally, we hardly spoke. But he still found ways of abuse. Wow. <laughs> so it was really bad. And then I asked the Lord, I said, when, I, when you said hand him over to me, I obeyed you. So why are you telling me at the end of the year, release him. And the Lord said, because I was testing him one more time. He said, I was testing him one more time wow. to see if I could turn him. And I found that I couldn't turn him. But I still was upset with God, to be honest. I, can imagine. I was, because I saw that it, it's going to affect a lot of things. And it did, you know, but I said to the Lord, you know, but he, and another thing he told me, this is important. Sorry. Another thing he told me, he said to me, any marriage that doesn't glorify me, hmm. I have no need of it. Hmm. That Those two things, the prodigal son that he gave me that night and said to me, read it. Where do you see the father stopping him? The father loved him, but the father knew the state of his heart, that he would, he's, a, he's in rebellion, which is the sin of what? Idolatry or, uh, idolatry or, or, or witchcraft. He's in rebellion. So the Lord said to me, that's where he is. He's in rebellion you can't do you can't persuade him now but when i said to the lord but why do i have to go through divorce why can't we just separate like before and he said because he's got to get what he wants to see that's not actually the answer he's got to get what he wants and he said to me that and he told me he said to me release him and i need it to be done and he now refused to divorce me for a year and a half and the lord said go and get the papers and divorce this man the marriage is dead but he said, any marriage that I have that does not glorify me, I have no need of it. So I said to him, Lord, do you know how many people's marriages not glorifying you? And he said, they're in it for themselves. As long as it doesn't come back onto the platform of orderliness, of love, of honor, of submission to God, it doesn't serve its purpose. And that is one of the major lessons I teach in Two Shall Be One. If your marriage doesn't serve God's purpose, you have denied God of pleasure in your marriage. And when you do that, the blessing you're supposed to bring doesn't come upon your marriage. And there is a consequence. The Lord made me understand this is, there's a consequence, okay? Yes, for every person that has been the one that is playing a role, that is stopping a marital relationship that God has put together. Remember, God told me and God told him, this is your wife, this is your husband. So we entered marriage by obedience, but it wasn't just like we entered the wrong relationship. We knew by revelation. Yes. So we are now becoming disobedient to that revelation. And God was like, I would judge every person that uses even their own hand to separate what he's put together. But he said, I reserve the right. So he said, I am divorcing you because I have told you, release him. 
The same God that received the vow has now broken the vow and said, release him. So that's why I say to people that not every divorce is the same. You can't, you can't say God hates divorce and use that as a blanket hmm. to keep people in bondage. It doesn't work that way because God has to judge the hearts of each individual yeah. and he's got to judge their obedience. He's got to judge if they've been able to follow his strategies. Hmm. So when people say to me, should I just leave? I said to them, 14 years. I said, at not one time did I leave my marriage unless I was released by God. Not once. Not once. So basically, we got to a place where your obedience was complete. Yes. You know, because yes. that's what the Bible tells yes. you. After yes. your obedience. obedience is complete. So, you know, you started by telling us that God was working obedient in you. Yes. So after your obedience has been complete. And he taught me a lot about men, honor, because he taught me. He taught me a lot. So we can see where in the, the midst ministry, of it, you know, he will still grace. rebuke me. You can't answer like that. Wow. You can't speak like that. You can't do this. You can't. I wanted to hurt this man. I wanted to have my own vengeance. I wanted to get my own back. I was like, I've got two children. This man has not done right by me. God said to me, you're not going to get listen, a penny. Listen, listen, listen. We got to go. We okay. got to go. But, right. you know, I you know, I, I cannot end without not asking you yeah. this lovely question. Will you marry again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I did there? Because yeah. she, she, you know, the ministry of the two shall be one. You know, we have a famous uh, um, uh, um, and tagline, you know, do you want to get married? Do you want to be married? Hallelujah. Yes, yes. You know, do you want to be married? So that's right. So I'm, I'm, you know, you know, I'm the one interviewing you. Yes, so yes, I have yes. the license to yes. ask you whatever question. Yes, I am going to be married again. <laughs> okay. And it's important for people to know it because there's a lot of controversy. I know about divorce and remarriage. Listen, the way the father put it to me, and I'm going to just be honest with you. He yes. said to me, number one, he reserves the right to release any couple from their marriage, mm. okay? Because the vows were made before him, okay? Number two, he's the witness between a man and the wife of his youth. Mm. That's what the Bible says in Malachi 2. So by that, he knows who committed the treachery. Mm. He, the treachery. Yes, because in Malachi 2, he keeps saying, God hates divorce, therefore stop the treachery. Mm. Now, treachery is basically betrayal. Mm. Don't betray your covenant marriage vows. Don't betray your role as a husband or as a wife. Don't betray it. Because God doesn't just look at the divorce. He looks at the treachery that caused it. Number three, he said to me that everything in life is forgivable, but everything in life is not acceptable. These are the lessons he taught me himself. So he said that is the reason why when you come to Jesus, he can forgive you. Because he has made up his mind that everything is forgivable apart from the unforgivable sin. Mm. And divorce is not the unforgivable sin. Yeah. But everything is not acceptable. So we have to learn when to say yes and when to say enough is enough. Yeah. We have to learn to set a boundary. Because he said that's what he does. And he taught me, copy me. You've got to restore your respect. You've got to restore your dignity. Mm. You've got to understand your value. Mm. And then he said to me, you've got to understand your purpose. Mm. He said, is marriage your God? He asked me. Mm. He said, is marriage your God? And I said, no. And he said, the way you are behaving is as if it is. Meaning that you're not even focusing on purpose, dignity, fulfillment, my counsel, my will. It is all about this man and marriage. And yet you're not able to even be obedient to what I've told you to do because you are holding back in ministry mm. because of what's going on in your marriage. Yes. So he said to me, marriage should not become an idol. Now people use that for singles, but most married people, their marriage becomes an idol when they will not allow God to intervene and allow yes. God to deal with the individuals. individual. Yes. So that was what he taught me as well. And he also taught me based on the fact of um, believer and unbeliever. Because people keep talking about adultery. Adultery is the only reason. The Lord said to me, adultery means unfaithfulness. 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 Now, Jesus actually said a, a man should not divorce his wife apart from sexual immorality. Sexual. <laughs> but there are many reasons men leave their wives. Their wives. It's true. Many individual reasons. Mm. So Jesus was trying to get to the root of the matter. So that, literally, we are creating these reasons ourselves. Yes. And we are giving them yes. license. License. Mm. 
And God was like, that was not my intention. But he said, if you commit treachery against God, which is sin, and you don't repent, guess what happens? The wages of sin is what? Death. Woman of God, just, you know, I want you to calmly explain this. You yeah. Know, you said treachery. Treachery. And then you said sexual you know, because what I have realized in the church that we do, we use this, we use the same word. Okay, yes. We generalize. We generalize, yes. Adultery. No. You know, no. In thinking it is a sexual word. But you see, the Bible was specific. It was specific. Jesus said, because, and the funny thing is, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. <laughs> he was talking to the religious and he was talking to the lawyers and the scribes. Mm. The legalistic people yes. who were in the habit of putting away their wives for any reason. Wow. Listen. That's what we don't talk about. Wow. So Jesus was saying that you Jesus are calling me a demon. When you read Matthew 12, he was basically, you know, yeah, this is deep. He had just been doing some miracles. Okay. He had been healing and casting out demons and they called him Beelzebub. And he said, you adulterers. You're an adulterer because you are putting away your wife for every reason apart from sexual immorality. Mm. And don't forget, that had got them cross. Why? Because that was their habit. So Jesus did not say that divorce will not happen, but he was saying that in the, he said, Moses allowed it because of the hardness of your heart. Mm. Yeah. Unrepentant sin, stubbornness, which is idolatry. That is the reason why refusing to change character issues insisting on your own way this is what is breaking your marriage and when i was i questioned god listen as a christian no christian and can we can we correct this when people say these days people divorce for any reason it's a lie no woman or man who's a christian walks out of their home easily woman of god please I love you to say that again. No woman or man who is a Christian. I love that word. That word. Who is a Christian. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Who is an obedient Christian. Uh -huh. Walks out of their home. You see, because we, you know, we, I think we are, we are underplaying that word Christian. Yes. And that is why the Lord said to me, treachery is unrepented sin. sin. Wow. It's unfaithfulness to the covenant. Huh. And he said, we that are treacherous against him in our sin. Do we maintain the relationship? We do. We try to. No. With God. Unrepented sin or unrepented sinners. Is there a relationship? Oh, no, there is not. There's no relationship. And the Lord said to me, if you and me cannot keep relationship because of sin has separated us, hmm. how can me and you keep relationship with unrepented sin? So I said, but Lord, he said, People take his word and twist it to bind others. Meanwhile, they themselves don't practice what is right. Neither do they intervene. And my sister, woman of God, I went through it. There were a few ministers that stood by me when they saw the reality of what was going on and spoke the truth. But I, can, I cannot count them on this hand. Wow. wow. I cannot count them on this hand. I cannot. But they are... a. Uh, Thousands of believers and ministers hmm. that came, in fact, one of them came to my house and said, you, you haven't prayed enough. And I said to her, listen, the prayers you haven't thought of, I've said them. Wow. And I said, because I've not revealed what I'm going through, because I didn't reveal it. I only revealed it to the eldership. I revealed it to the eldership. And in the end, the Lord took me to Matthew 18. And when Jesus was saying, if your brother sins against you, Tell him. And then he said to me, have you done that? I said, yes, Lord. And then he took me and said, what's the next thing? And I said, the next thing is, if he doesn't hear you, go to a third party okay. and tell him okay. what is the issue okay. and try and resolve it. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, have you done that? I said, yes, Lord. And I was in tears and I said to God, I said, God, you want my blood. I don't know what you want from me, but you want my blood. Mm. And he woke me up and said, read this. Then he said, What's the next thing? He said, the next thing is, take it to who? Mm. The church. So as the church, I now realized that we have a governmental duty a governmental. to intervene in failing marriages, but rather we stand back and we judge and condemn and leave people to it. Not on all cases, but in many. Mm. 
And then when the divorce comes, we condemn. Now, I asked the pastors and I said, his soul is being lost. So even if you can't save our marriage, what about his soul? For that alone, why don't you talk to him? For that alone, talk to him. Listen, we have to put, you know, I, I just think they have to be a part two. I know. I just think they have to be well, a part maybe two. Well, maybe what they will do is, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll end it and I will, I will just share to the end, but then we will cut it into three when, when they're playing it back. Yeah. That's, you know, yeah, because, because I don't just... want to go through this again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go through this again. But to be honest, I, I, I can't tell you how important it is because the aftermath, we had to move house, no help from the church. I asked for it. It did not come. I had to look for finances. We had a joint business, not knowing how to feed the children. And yet believers came to my front door to tell me I'm not praying enough and to berate me. And I said to them, have you ever thought about how I'm managing? Yeah. The time came where I wanted to leave my children with my sister. And I said to her, I don't think I can manage because I could feel my, my mind was going mad. I knew that the pressure on me was too much because a lot of decisions have to be made at the same time. Meanwhile, you're getting phone calls every day of people. God hates divorce. God hates divorce. But where were you when I was crying out? You see, this is the thing. We can't just quote one thing. The good Samaritan dealt with this situation and then worried about the status after. But we, we want to ask so many questions upon bleeding bodies lying by the roadside. And by, if you're not careful, that person's life is not only in danger, but their spiritual life is gone. Now, thanks be to God, I was restored and I am restored. You are. You know, but the Lord wanted me to really share with people. If it was not for the relationship I had with God before, many people are still unsaved today because of, divorce. Because of this. Many people dare not step into a church today. Hmm because of this, because we rather will throw a stone or we will use our title to walk by like the Levite and the, who was it, the Pharisee, whatever. <laughs> we walk by because we don't want to get involved. Meanwhile, the scripture tells us you must rescue those that are stumbling to the slaughter. You must take care of the dying, okay? And it says, if you think it's none of your business, God is looking at your heart and will judge. Is there in Proverbs? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, is there. So that was the thing that the Lord really put in my heart in those days. And he said to me, I remember it like day. I'm making you an internet evangelist. I didn't know what it was. I wasn't on Facebook. And I said, what is that? And he said, a day will come where the good Samaritan will become your main message. Helping others not to fall by the wayside who have been stripped because of divorce. And we're going to picking up the pieces because you also have a yeah show picking yeah up the yeah picking up the pieces and that's how mm -hmm. we started me you know online i came on i think 2012 wow. 2012 i came online onto facebook and he just said to me just write once a day by then we were you know the divorce was i think was final or the decree absolute was coming and he just said to me write once a day a word of encouragement and i will build this page and it's called picking up the pieces and it just blew up, like 25,000 people just came in a year. So can you see how much people out there yeah. that is suffering? Yeah, yeah. And that picking up pieces was not just dealing with divorce, it was just dealing with going through trauma, you know, going through things that you could not make sense of and feeling as if God had rejected you, feeling as if God was not with you anymore. Because the funny thing is the church walked out of my life. Oh but the Holy Spirit walked in. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. Ooh. Hallelujah. The church walked out, but the Holy Spirit walked in. And Amen. I didn't even talk to him, but he talked to me. I didn't talk to him because I couldn't talk to him. I said, you've let me down. You've betrayed me. That was my thinking. So I couldn't talk to him, but he talked to me. He comforted me. And I said, Lord, I thought you've gone. I thought, you know, I've done the unforgivable here. So why are you still here? And he said to me, your marriage has failed, but I've not failed you. I've not failed you. 
have not failed you. And he told me at that point, I will restore you. And he told me, you will remarry. So for everyone out there that you think that divorce is the unforgivable sin, I'm not condoning divorcing for any reason. I am not saying there's no accident or um, um, sin that has happened. If you cannot forgive yourselves, hardness of heart, um, arrogance, what do you call it? Arrogance, hardness of heart, pride. arrogance and pride, yeah? Unrepented sin. It will separate your relationship, treachery. It will separate your relationship. But if your marriage has hit an accident and for whatever reason, one party, because you see, it takes two to build a marriage, but one to break it. I was willing to forgive. Yes. I was willing, not only willing, I did forgive. And I do forgive, okay? And we do speak, okay? And we do co-parent. So that's not the issue here. But the issue here is divorce is not the unforgivable sin. And it what you do in somebody else's life matters to help stop the divorce. So true. That's the truth. Yeah. If you're not willing to stand and to bring accountability, to counsel and to do everything in your power, to surround that couple with help, do not be the one to talk about it on the pulpit. Don't. Because we, become, we make ourselves liars when we practice what we don't preach. You know, we the make ourselves liars. Yeah. We make ourselves liars. Secondly, if you've been divorced, God is not against you. Yes, you have broken your vows. Whether you caused the divorce or whether you were a victim of divorce, God wants you to understand that this is the reason Jesus came. Yes. For whatever purpose, you couldn't fix it. But Jesus can fix you. Jesus can fix you. He had to yeah. fix me. He had to restore me. And then he had to work on my ex-husband and fix him. There is, there's no, don't think to yourself, life has ended because of divorce. And don't listen to the religious spirits out there that are condemning you that you cannot remarry. Because one thing is sure, if you were young or even if you're middle-aged, men especially, most of them get remarried. Why? Just your sexual needs alone require it. Defilement is in the church. We are being real now. Because of lack of wisdom concerning marriage. And the Lord said to me, I would rather kill and make alive and restore right foundation then continue in wrong relationships with defilement that don't glorify me. So I said, God, why are, are you saying this to me and to others? And yet you're not saying it to, to him. To the, no, not even just to him, to the, make, the body of the church. We cannot continue to deny what is going on. 50% of people are divorced in the church. That is so sad. It's not right. It's, 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 it can't be right. It's not because right. Because Jesus said that in the beginning it was not so. It's not right. I, I love that scripture because I say to people that Jesus will always take you back to the original foundation. It's all about the beginning. For me, when I think yes. about God, it's all about the beginning, yes. you know, for me. Yes. He will always take you back to the original foundation. What is your foundation laid on? And if the foundation is not good, are you willing to go back and restore it? Let's stop talking about the devil for a minute until we restore the foundation. Listen, I always say we ourselves, we are the number one devil. No, no. You know. You know, and I can't even share too much about even what the kids went through. Oh, I, I'm, I'm very sure that has to be a different Yeah, issue. what the kids went so through. The pain. The rejection of not having people to turn to because you're now damaged goods. The attitude of believers that even non-believers talk to me about. The lawyers, the police say that they've seen a pandemic among certain cultures of black people, of divorce and of isolation and exclusion. And they asking me why. Unbelievers questioning, why do you behave like that? Unbelievers asking me, is that what is written? And I say to them, no, wow. it is our wrong interpretation. Wow. And then the church making sure I knew 
I was not accepted. Upon their failing marriages, the divorcee is worse. Upon their adulterous marriages, the divorcee is worse. Things that we see in ministry that we know are going on and yet because you are a victim of divorce, you are less. And many men are out there and they will put this on my heart. Many of you are out there hurting today because you don't know how to repair, you don't know how to restore what went wrong. Many women, you're out there feeling guilty, condemned, no good, no more use for you. Well, I've got news for everyone. The Samaritan woman, mm -hmm. five times married, was chosen. I love you. So I began to say to people, I'm the divorcee who God has chosen. Amen. I'm the divorcee. Yeah, I had to bring it out because I was tired of them throwing their stones at me. And so I decided to own it. Mm -hmm. so, okay, fine. But at least let my story help somebody else not to make that same mistake. mistake. At least let my story help somebody else know the Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, will never leave you or forsake you. He's not his church. He loves his church. He wants to become one with his church. But his church are still developing. We are still growing. Jesus is not his church. Don't think they're the same thing. I was homeless, guys. I went to a stage whereby my children, we were at the bus stop with our bags. Listen, the day you told the story, every one of us was, you know, just looking for a tissue box. It was too much. Because it was just it was too, too much. much. It was too much. And the people told me, oh, we're not going to allow you in because we don't want to have children. Nine and you were, serving, old, you were, were you still serving at the church? I was still serving at the church. The church said they would assist me. Not a penny came from there. Now, this is a church that I love. I serve with all my heart. And I've been serving for many years. So I understand not you can't help everyone. But I thought something, you understand? I thought something would come out. Nothing came out. I haven't out. given more. Yeah, nothing came out. And when I realized that, you know what? There's no point. Just withdraw and try and find a way through which may not have been the right choice, but I had to make that choice for my sake, for Vivian's sake, because it was too much for me at that time. Um, I had to go across the, the ravine between where I was to where I knew I had to be, which was I had to find a place. I had to get the, a house, over, a roof over their head. I had to get them new schools. I had to provide for them. I had to protect them. And you're there at the bus stop, and then the woman calls you. Sorry. And then the little one says, the big one said, Mom, where are we going? And I knew, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I just thought to myself, go to a BNB. So I went on the bus and I went to a BNB. And in that BNB, that was our refuge for some days. And the Lord will give me clients to build websites. I will build them, get paid, pay for the BNB. And every day I will go to the council and they will give me, oh, we can't help you because. We can't help you because. We can't help you because. Until the day I went to shelter charity. Can I just say something there? You know, she, she you know, you said B and B, you know. B and B is better than breakfast. This no, no, no. You know, oh. this is a woman that has a four bedroom house. House. Can you see how wicked the spirit that is behind divorce is? You know, it just doesn't take the man out of the house, but it is what render a woman who is in a vulnerable position, you know, to lose a house and she's left with two children on the bus stop looking for a B and B. Where is the church? Why are you looking for a B and B? Because he lost no, the house. I, I, I yeah. understand. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. you were yeah, looking right. for a B and B and I know that that house has also house 
others that was in need. Yeah. Because that is one thing I said to people, get to know people. Then you will understand the passion that is behind their ministry. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is a woman that has house. As in, I mean, she has house people. Yes. You know, she's put roof over people's head. Even you know. in temporary accommodation. And now yeah. she's left. Yes. She's lost her husband. Lost her house of four beautiful because I, I you know, we did, cars, we, did, we did a drive through. Yeah. It was a beautiful house. Yeah. You know, she's lost that cars and everything. And she's looking for a BNB. A BNB is not even a proper hotel. It's, it's not a proper hotel, but the reason I chose it was because it has breakfast. Of course, I know. So I knew that my kids would eat. That was my only concern. Every day, my concern was they will have a roof over their head. <sighs> Okay, and they will eat and they will go to school. And to God be the glory, they had a roof over their head every day. They've eaten till today and they went to school and they excelled in school. They are a testimony. Woman of God, you, you have a bag of, te as in bags of testimony. Yeah. You know, for those that have worked closely with you, yeah. can see. And mm. one, you know, I tell people, know the individual. You are transparent. Yeah. You are somebody that, you know, jump when the Lord say jump. Yes. And if he doesn't say jump, you don't. <laughs> no. You know, you're somebody that you, as in, so, when you say one is obedient, that is one thing I love about you. You are obedient to the call. Amen. You know, and you love, you are a Jesus, genuine lover. Amen. You know, and Amen. your heart. Amen. You know, just seek to do the things of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So for people, I just want you to be encouraged by the woman's story because, you know, our time is, we're getting to midnight. I know. <laughs> you know and I know there's still more that, there's you know, so she, much, you know, you know she, she's got you to, share all, to but... you know, to share. Yeah. But um, I know that the Lord will give us the opportunity again. Yeah. yeah. And can I just use even this platform to you know, to say to those that, you know, I know your course is coming for November. Yes. You know, the yes, way in. Yes. You know, listen, yes. this woman, she's she's a powerhouse. Sometimes I know she's a friend, which yes. I am blessed to be, Amen. you know. Amen. And you, when I listen to our talk, I wonder, I'm like, should I use the word jealous? I'm like, <laughs> God, why don't you talk to me that way? <laughs> but I think that I say to people that the one thing you'll come out with when you have trauma that you will walk with with Christ is you will have revelation of him, of his heart. You do. Not you just the word, but his way and his heart. Yeah. Because he explained his word and what he meant yeah. by his word. Mm. And so he undid a lot of those religious things that people were telling me himself. and also you are the word woman yeah you know she's you know, i don't joke with the word she's woman. she's one of those people you can easily call you don't need to go to google you know just so, call her no you know and she will tell you where the one the exact word the passage you know the chapter you know and the verse yeah. <laughs> so you don't need google when you know evangelist vivian or apostle don't even vivian. Say like that, but when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to the word i love the word because the word shows me the mind of god you do the mind of God, but what the Lord used these years to do for me is to show me his heart. He said, many know my word, they don't carry my heart. And that's why they don't live according to his ways. There's an intention God has for what he wrote, but we, we twist the intention and then we bring out the word. Yeah. It's wrong application, it's wrong. We have to take the body of the word and look and say to ourselves, what was the writer intending? What is he trying to get to by doing this? Is he trying to keep people in a bondage to say, oh, just stay in there so that you can say you've done 50 years? No, 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 no. There's a reason he wrote what he wrote for the good of the couple and of the family. But if it is not working properly, it means that the ingredients are wrong. So we need to correct ourselves. We need to correct ourselves, you know? And so, you know it already, the way we come at marriage, supernatural marriage, I'm not interested in worldly marriage. I'm not interested in traditional marriage. I know we do it traditionally for our culture, no problem, but I'm not interested. I'm interested in kingdom marriage. Kingdom marriage, kingdom marriage means that you will be held accountable. Your character 
kingdom marriage means that you will be looking to please God with mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. Kingdom marriage means that you will accept what you have been called to be, to be in the scripture. Yeah. No excuses. Mm -hmm. Kingdom marriage is what brings joy so and happiness. Called, so if you're called to be her husband, yes, you have to be her yes. husband. And if you're called to be, it holds wife, you to account. Kingdom marriage is 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 a grade, is the highest grade of relationship. And everybody in that grade of relationship is glorifying God because God can fulfill his mission, not only to have godly children, but for people to learn his ways by just observing you. How many of us can say that? Woman of God, by looking at our marriages, we want to save the world. We want to save souls. Yeah. We but the Lord said to me, you want to win the world, but can you, the church, we can't heal ourselves. We can't correct ourselves. We can't counsel ourselves. Yeah. And yet we want to tell the world, the world has compassion. Where is the compassion in the church? Absolutely. We'd rather be right than be um, um, a rescuer, a redeemer. Jesus is always right. But you don't see him throwing the stones together with the people. He said, you know what? Neither do I condemn you. When the accident has happened, the next mindset should be restoration mindset. The next mindset should be compassion. This person is bleeding. This husband, this wife, things are not well with them. Restore them at your cost. Hmm. At your cost. The word of God says, at your cost. The Samaritan said, at my cost, I will do it. Hmm. At my cost. But we, we want to rather say that, no, it is their cost. It's up to them. It's their business. We sit in our houses happily, looking at what people are going through condemning them instead of healing and trying to help to restore them that can only happen by a corporate effort and that is why i am passionate about restoring righteous foundations and i'm thankful to god for giving me an opportunity in this ministry to see it come to pass because that for me is nemesis amen hallelujah can we end with this yes you know so how did you think we have failed or where have we failed? I think honesty and humility. Honesty and humility. Honesty. We're not honest with ourselves. Mm. We pretend a lot. We, we don't confront things. Anything you want to change has to be confronted. Mm. With my situation, they speak to the woman only. The men are left out of it. He's the head of his house, and that's all they know. How he rules his house, who knows? Mm. Now, I've met wonderful men of God who are mentors for men, yeah. which I think is the most needed ministry in the church. Mentorship of men. So men have accountability. Mm. How can a man get up and do these things for 14 years and oh, no one crazy. can find a way of holding, him accountable. of holding him accountable? What kind of sons are we raising? as fathers, that nobody's overseeing them? Or what kind of example are we leaving as mothers? You know, so honesty, we're not honest to how bad things are. We're not honest to our part in it. We're not honest to what we could have done better. We're not honest to try and correct ourselves. We, we preach it fine, but we're not honest to confront it. We're not honest to say, you know what, this man is going wayward. This woman is going off the rails. We're not even honest to talk to somebody about what we're going through. That's how bad things have got now. Now people know that you better just shut up. So now yeah. they keep quiet. So no honesty. Secondly, no humility. Because there's nothing you cannot change with humility. Because humility means you're willing to take a look at yourself. Yes. Humility means that whatever you say, Lord, is right. Humility means that I may not see the way out yet but I will take your advice. Humility means that I will look for to do it God's way. Humility means I will listen to my husband, to my wife. That's humility. We are full of pride. We are full of pride. That's the truth. As a church, I'm talking about globally, we are full of pride. Because you cannot tell me 50% of people that have the scripture and the Holy Ghost. And the Come Holy on, Ghost. hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost. 
are still practicing the same thing of that unbelievers world. are doing. That has no Holy Ghost, has no scripture. We can bind them, we can lose. But if we keep giving God the, the devil the platform, there's nothing we can do. So humility, the Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil. But we just want to bind, lose, bind, lose, bind. No submission. Submission is for all believers, not just for wives. Oh. No we'll, submission. I, I think we'll leave that for another no. day. You know, the submitting, you know, the you know, the concept of submission. Submission. Submission is, is a spirit. He said, let this mind be in you, in you. that was in Christ Jesus, Submission. who did not think it robbery to be made equal with God, but humbled himself yeah. and became a man yeah. of no reputation. Yeah. Do you understand? This is the mindset. Of no reputation. He was not a wife. He's a husband. He's a son. He's a man. So don't tell me about the wives only submitting. Yeah. Submission is a Christ mindset yeah. for all men. Who call themselves Christians? Oh, I love that. Amen. Submission is yes, a Christ mindset, mindset to all, all men, men who call, call themselves, themselves Christians. Wow. Who call themselves Christians. Wow. So we have to have that mindset. And if I'm submitting to you and you're submitting to me in the fear of God, according to Ephesians 5, right? Now, when you come with something, I've got to be willing to hear. Now, I learned this the hard way because there was not every time I was willing to hear. But the Lord said to me, in your next marriage, listen more. He told me, he said, just listen more. Because they, you, they may not be right. That's not the issue. Humility listens. Hmm. I've learned that now. I've taken something away yeah. and I've learned now. Humility listens. Hmm. Jesus listens to us. You understand? Yeah. And the same to you towards me. Where would the problem be? We are still going to have disagreement. You know that? Yeah. We are still going to have difference of opinion. Yeah. But because of our attitude and our character, mm -hmm. there is nothing we cannot overcome. So the devil cannot inflict divorce. Excuse me. He puts us in circumstances which force our choices, mm -hmm. our choices to obey, disobey, be arrogant, prideful, unsubmissive, Brings divorce. Listen, you have to book a course. <laughs> you have to book a class. You know, with, no, my sister. You know, with, with, with Vivian Rose. But no, it I has believe been, it. Because I've gone through it and I've seen the pain of it. It's been amazing. Thank you so it's much. It's been, you know, it's been amazing. I can't even believe, we, you know, we're almost getting to two hours. I know. I know they will break it you down. Know. <laughs> you know, we're almost getting down. to two hours. Yeah. But, you know, it has been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful you know, uh, and time, you know, this evening Thank here goodness. in the UK, Amen. you know, sitting down with you, you know, on the studio of Amazing. my story, Thank you, you know, so with much. the host herself, you know, being interviewed, you know, so we just want to say thank you so much to all our viewers, you know, who has tuned oh, in so from, from all over, you saying, know, who has tuned so in from all over the place, you, you know, to... to Okay. You know, to watch and to listen to this amazing, you know, uh, and testimony of this amazing, amazing sister, mother, friend, oh. everything you can call her, Thank you know. You. And I hope, because it has blessed me and I hope it has blessed you and I hope, you know, you've learned, you know, a lot, you know, from our sharing our personal story it is not easy you know to be mm. transparent you know it is not easy to be honest you know it is not easy to tell it you know yeah. as it is I and one of the things that is the lord has given to you is this is a fearless spirit Amen. you know it makes you tell it <laughs> as it is and i know you know we have been blessed this evening you know and honestly you know just keep in touch you know if you've not subscribed yet to the ignite media tv Please subscribe, share, you know, spread the news. The Lord is doing something wonderful, you know, in this season. He wants to heal his daughters. He wants to heal his sons. He wants to bring his mind yes. to us, consigning yes. that which is written mm. in his word, in the book. Hallelujah. Which you and I call the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. So I just want to say thank you so much. You know, it has been wonderful. I think I've said that how many times? <laughs> because <laughs> indeed it has Amen. been wonderful. I appreciate your patience. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank God it's over and God has done a miracle. 
So I said to him, I said, if you, if I don't cry, then I know you've done a miracle. I know we kept the tissue because <laughs> I've been crying for three days when he told me to do it. I didn't want to do it. I've been crying for three days. So it shows you that the Lord, when you obey him, <laughs> He helps you because obedient okay. guys is I'm the okay. key. I'm okay. So God is good. Thank you so much. And I'm, you know, next week we have more, um, um, um another couple, okay. um, that um, um went through divorce and are now remarried. Amen. And I'm, you know, restored, preparing for marriage. Okay. Amen. Amen. I'm, pre I'm preparing for marriage. Yeah. Um, my remarriage testimony that is coming forth now. Amen. Um, but they're going to share their perspective as well because everybody's relationship is different, you yes. know. And I'm very excited they're from the um, United States, Ooh. yes, of America. Amen. This is Mrs. Williams. So they're going to be here next week. And I can't wait to just speak with them about it as well because I believe this is the season healing must take place. Yes. And people must understand that it's not the end. It's not the end. Mm. You know, there is life after divorce and it takes time. You do have to heal. Yes. But if you keep Jesus in your life, mm. he will put you back together, together in a better way. I must say that in a more humble way, mm. in a way that, you know, you appreciate people more. Yes. You appreciate his word more. Yes. You know, you appreciate why he says what he says, guys. Yes. Listen, there are reasons. Sometimes he doesn't explain, but there are reasons. And you respect the institution of marriage. I respect the institution of marriage. And we must respect it. But I don't tolerate anymore um, hypocrisy. No, because I've seen, I've seen the hard way. So, yeah, I just, I just hope that's encouraged people anyway. God bless you. I'm very sure it has. God Amen. bless you. God bless you. And join us next week. Next Bye. week, same time. Bye -bye. For myself and Vivian Rose from the from my, my story. story. <laughs> <laughs> my story. God bless you.